Well, good morning and welcome as we gather here to worship our Creator, our Redeemer, our God, and our friend. We gather here on a beautiful day that God has given us as we gather to celebrate who our God is and all that He has and continues to do for us, most especially in His Son, Jesus Christ. Well, as we gather here, just a reminder, if you'd like to join us for our in-person worship, go to holysevior.org and pull up that reservation link and sign up for reservations. On a day like today is a communion Sunday, so you'll indicate how many will be joining you for communion. If you're joining us online, we'd like to come by for our drive through communion. We'll be doing that today from 12 to 3 p.m. and enjoy this beautiful day as you stop in. We'll have a short order of worship and offer you the sacrament. Also, as we gather here, just a reminder that as school, schools are preparing to kind of kick back into session, still a lot of questions what they may look like, but one of the things that we wanted to do as a congregation, like we've done the last number of years, is to support some of the local schools in our community. And one of the best ways to do that now, rather than us bringing things in and dropping them off, is that we'd send in a cash donation, a $10 gift, $20 gift. It can go a long ways to helping us support our local schools and offering them some of the supplies they need to work with the students that will be there. All right. Well, it's time for us to get up, move around. For those of you at home, you know, you can do the same thing. This was Dale's idea is to kind of get right here, get your hands like this. You can do this at home too. Come on. Get, like, like you're holding on to something, okay? And here's what you're going to do. You're going to ball it all up. This is a ball of love. You're going to just toss it off to someone over there. So if you're here, you've got to stand up, kind of pass the ball of love around. You can do this online a little bit. Let's get up. Let's move around. Let's shake some hands. And let's say hello. Well, I guess we can't shake hands, though. Just virtually. to get my glasses untangled from my mask here. Good morning. It's nice to see all of our spots filled today. It's great, isn't it? Almost feels like a crowd. I was not doing well. Yeah. Let's open in prayer, should we? Good morning, Jesus. What a marvelous God you are. We have come to you today to worship you and offer up praise for who you are and for what you have done for us. You have brought salvation to us. Your Holy Spirit has given us the ability to believe and know that you are, God, are a God of great love. You have truly blessed us and continue to be a part of our daily lives. We pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. But when I think that God is Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it.
Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. I cry out to God, yes I shout, oh that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed with hands lifted towards heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed with longing for his help. You just don't let me sleep, I am too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days, long since ended, when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love for me forever? Have his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? And I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. But then I recall all that you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts, and I can't stop thinking about your mighty works. Well, this morning, as we gather here, we're kind of in between series. We wrapped up a series this last week called Summer Slump. And then next week, we got a new series called Rethinking Church. Today, we're going to talk about yelling at God. Now, as you think about that for just a moment, I got a question. Have you ever, first of all, do you know what this is? Okay, everyone knows it's a bottle of Coke, right? Have you ever felt like a bottle of Coke? Now, as you ponder that for just a moment, you're thinking, no. Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like a bottle of coke you know and because it's a pandemic i can't ask for a volunteer to come open this up <laughs> now i'm asking a question have you ever felt like a bottle of coke have you ever felt so frustrated so aggravated so overwhelmed so angry you just felt like you were just about ready to do what blow up right i mean if somebody just would take the cap off it would just go everywhere you know, in life, sometimes, sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes, you know, we feel aggravated and frustrated and hurt and worried and overwhelmed and angry. And it feels like it's just all bubbling up inside of us. You know, I know I've shared sometimes, I get that way when I'm driving sometimes, get to the roundabout, and I'm waiting for someone to go because it's not a stop sign. You know, the small moments. But in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of, financial and economic uncertainties about whether schools should open or not open and the politics in our nation and our world and the chaos, everything just makes us kind of feel like we're ready to do what? Explode. Yes, we do that, you know, there's one place that's got an answer for you. Iceland. Yeah, actually, if you go to lookslikeyouneediceland.com, you can go there and you'll record your yell, and they'll send that yell, that frustration, that anger, that aggravation out into the openness of Iceland. You should try it. It's really quite relaxing, you know. Just go there, get on your computer, you know, don't do it. Don't tell anybody else you're doing it better yet, and just scream into the computer, and they'll send it right out. It feels really good sometimes, doesn't it, just to kind of let it all out? You know, all of that, that pressure that's building up inside of us, all of that fear and that anxiety and that anger, and we let it out. But what about yelling at God? Now, that kind of seems a little sacrilegious, right? If you yell at God, you're kind of just waiting for that bolt of lightning to come down and zap you one, Right? Because it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Yet, that's exactly what we see unfolding here in this psalm that Shane read for us just a little earlier. From Psalm 77. 
Let's read together these words. Psalm 77, verse 1. I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. No, 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 no. See, you, you read that, but now I want you to read with a little bit of passion. All right, we're going to do this. If you're at home, you know, you can really shout it out because there's no one else around. Let's read it again. I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. Have you ever felt like that? Ever felt so frustrated, so overwhelmed, so angry about the situation that you are in right now, the situation the world is in, your family is in, whether it's economics, whether it's relational, whether it's your physical health, your spiritual health, you just felt all this building up inside and you just want to yell and scream, yet sometimes we think as kind of pious Christians, you know, we just need to keep it all contained inside, right? Even though it is all bubbling inside of us, and sometimes it doesn't take much the right person, you know. Oh, I could hear that. Um, the right person touches that cap. Dale said, don't use that. Please use a can. That's why he sat a little further away. That, that, you know, just like that bottle of soda that we're just going to explode, we're just going to explode. Yet here's the truth that we see in this psalm of David. That God would rather us run to him, rather come to him in anger than run from him in anger. Think about it for just a moment. God would rather you come to him. He'd rather have you running to him in your anger, in your frustration, in your fear and anxiety than running away from him. And this is exactly what we see unfolding here for David in Psalm 77. Now David wrote most of the Psalms. And in fact, what we see in many of the Psalms is David being very honest and real. This kind of real, raw relationship that David has with God. That he cries out. That he hurls his frustration at the creator of the universe. But he knows that God hears and listens. Even though as he's struggling with this, and I don't think he wrote this as he was struggling. I think he probably wrote this sometime after he'd processed something. Sometime after he'd questioned God and was angry at God. And we, and we see this unfolding as the verses continue. 7, 8, and 9 we'll read together. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promises permanently failed? God has forgotten to be gracious. Has he slammed the door on his compassion? I, I love that visual image there. This idea, has God slammed the door on his compassion? Has God completely forgotten about who I am, about the situation that I am in? Am I all alone in what I'm going through? I don't know about you, but I know I've felt like that sometimes. I felt like that, God, why is this going on in my life right now? Why am I experiencing this? What, what did I do, God? It kind of makes it sound like Job, right? If you know Job's story in the Bible, God, I am so angry. I'm so frustrated. I'm so hurt. And yet sometimes we think we have to have kind of these, you know, poetic, flowery prayers like we might have in church. When again, what God is really looking for us is to be honest and real with what's going on inside of us. And what's going on inside of you. Because God would rather you come to him in anger than run away from him in anger. We see this in a movie from 1997. The movie is called The Apostle. It's written, directed, and starring Robert Duvall. It is this great story of this southern Pentecostal preacher, Sonny, who, you know, is just so frustrated. This great clip here. He's so frustrated, so angry, so overwhelmed, and he's pacing back and forth, and he's shaking his fist. He's angry at God, and he's letting God know it. But he's also a great example of what David does here in this psalm as he's shaking his fist in his anger. And again, this is not the only place that we see, you know, David express this anger and this frustration at the creator of the universe. He does this. He doesn't fear that God is going to strike him dead with a lightning or come down and step on him and squish him like a bug. But rather, the God of the universe is big enough to hear his frustrations, his hurts, and his anger. We hear this in Psalm 13 and Psalm 61. We read Psalm 13, verse 1. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? 
How long will you hide your face from me? Now think about that for just a second. You know, this question, long, how long, Lord? How long are you going to forget me? Forever? I feel like you forgot me, like you've abandoned me, that you don't care about me. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. When my heart is faint, when I feel overwhelmed with frustration, with hurt, with doubts, with fear, anger, God, hear me. And God invites us to come to him. He reminds us through our Savior Jesus Christ that he is always, always with us. That he never, ever abandons us. He never abandons us because he abandoned his son, our Savior Jesus, on the cross. When his very own son called out to him, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? That he was abandoned because he took on himself all of our sins, all of our anger, all of our frustration, all of our doubt, all of our fears. He took it all on himself at the cross. And in his death and in his resurrection, he guarantees that we have a God who hears, who listens, who cares. No matter the emotions that we have to express to him. And I love what David does as he processes this journey that he had been on. Verse 11, he writes these words that we read together. But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. You know, the reason that we do this as we gather for worship, whether we're online, in person, watching on YouTube later on, or a podcast, the reason that, you know, we stay connected in God's Word is that it helps us remember God's promises, especially when we're hurt and fearful and angry and overwhelmed, that we have a God who's true to His promise to love us and be with us and hear us. Because, again, our God would rather us come to Him in our anger, then run from him in anger. So here's a challenge for us. You know those moments when you might feel like this, you know, bottle of Coca-Cola, you know, and, and that pressure and that frustration is all building there. You can see all the bubbles bubbling up there. Is that, you know, we go yell it out on the mountain. That we come before our God. And we scream and we vent because we know a God who hears us and loves us. And the God who is there for us in his son Jesus Christ. My challenge for us is this. As you think about this week, as you think about everything that's been going on, really from the beginning of this year, and that will most likely continue for months and months to come. All that frustration, that fear, and that aggravation, that, and that anger. That we run to our God. We run to him and ask this question of ourselves often. Where in your life do you need to be honest with God? about your feelings? Where in your life do you need to be honest with God about the fears and the frustrations, the sense of being overwhelmed, the sense of being stepped on, the anger and anxiety that you may feel, that you run to God with all of that emotion, with those raw, genuine emotions, and feel the embrace of a loving God who's always with you. We pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your great love. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that, unlike David, there are days, there are moments when we are so frustrated, that we are so fearful, that we are so overwhelmed, that, Lord, we feel like everything is against us. Lord, we are angry at, at others, angry at ourselves. Lord, even sometimes angry at you, the God of the universe. And yet, Lord, you invite us to come and to yell. Lord, we're thankful that, you know, we can go to places like, Iceland, and yell out to the wilderness, to the nothingness. But Lord, we're thankful, most especially, we can yell out to you. That you hear our frustrations, you hear our fear, and you hear our anger. Bless us, we pray, Jesus, in your name. Amen. This time we confess this faith that we share in this God who is the creator of the universe, who redeems us, who uplifts us and calls and gathers us together, the God who hears our frustrations, our fears, and our anger. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now come before our God to confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, we have turned away from you and sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. We have done the things you forbid and have not done the things you command. We have loved and served ourselves rather than you. We have not loved our neighbors as you have loved us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, we boldly ask for forgiveness. Change our hearts that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may love and serve you with our whole heart and soul. It is God's promise of love and forgiveness. God has heard your plea for forgiveness. And for the sake of Jesus Christ, he answers your prayers. Here is promise to you in Jesus Christ. All of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we continue with our offerings. This is one of the ways we can express our gratitude for God, for his love, his grace, and forgiveness, but for all the blessings that he gives to us each and every day. And we can do that through our check or cash gifts. We can do that by going online to holycu.org or text giving at 84321. And, and those gifts, you know, we use those to support the ministry we have here, both our ministry locally and globally all around the world. In fact, we've got a, some words here from our very own missionary, Chelsea Irwin, who's over in the Czech Republic. And we can just see how about how those gifts that we have, the ways we can support not only through our financial gifts and prayers, are blessings to others. She writes, Dear Holy Savior, thank you so much for your prayers, encouragement, and financial support towards God's work in the Czech Republic. You are such a big part of this ministry, and each one of you plays a role, from the volunteers who fold my newsletters to the continued encouraging emails and the individual families who have felt the call to give financially. I send you all a massive thank you. I cannot wait to come back to Nebraska and share with you all the amazing gospel sharing that is going on here in the Czech Republic. This is definitely a trying time to be a Christian as we look outside and see a world we are living in. But God has not stopped taking care of us, and he has not stopped calling us to serve. This summer, I have been engaging in, Bible, in a Bible study with one of the high school youth at my church. We are going through the book of Philippians and focusing on the theme of joy from 1 Corinthians 1, 12 through 14, where Paul writes, I want you to know, brothers, that joy and to live without that fear. Paul was still serving as a missionary even from prison. And even in chains, he continued to serve with his whole heart and with joy. God is calling you to find unique ways to share your faith with others during this time, just like our friend Gary Teese often says, it's time to wake up. So I encourage you, wake up and be spiritually prepared to serve. Ask God when he is calling, where he's calling you to serve. How can you get involved in his mission in Lincoln, online, at Holy Savior? Thank you again for your continued prayers, encouragement, and financial support. Please pray for me as I continue serving here amongst a community of unbelievers. Especially, pray as I prepare to teach English again in the fall in the public elementary school in Bohemian. And remember, to be on the lookout for how God is calling you to serve in your community and around the world. God's richest blessings shall see you. Again, one of the many ways that our gifts make a difference, not only here in Lincoln, but around the world.
Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today sometimes questioning why we have had four deaths within our church in such a short period of time. Lord, it makes us worry about our own mortality. That is why we are here to remember that you are a loving and caring God. Jesus, please be with all of these families as they grieve the, this great loss. Though we know that they are now with you, the loss to their family is always difficult. Lord, we also want to lift up all that are on our prayer list. We also lift up to you in prayer, Jesus, the following people. John Gosson's family, as he is nearing the end of his life. For Kim and her family, as they mourn the loss of her mother. For Megan, for continued healing after her surgery. For Amy Kay, who has stage four cancer, and for her husband and their baby. For Pat's reconstructive jaw surgery. Lord, wrap your arms around them and hold them close. Lord, we ask that you bring healing to their lives. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus now invites us to come to his table, to receive the gift that he offers through the simple bread and wine, his true body and blood broken and shed for us. With the assurance and comfort that it gives us as we are reminded of a God who loves us, a God who is with us, and a God who forgives us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ, broken on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. And take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. We pray, Lord God, we thank you again for this refreshing May strengthen all of those who receive the gift this day, here in worship, and later this afternoon. We pray, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and to life everlasting. Depart in peace knowing that all your sins have been forgiven you. May the God of hope fill you with joy, all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our 
Hi, Holy Savior. Before we wrap up, we need your help to stay connected in such a disconnected time. Please go to holysavior.org and click on the link to fill out our new online connection card. Then simply enter your name, email, date, and let us know how we can serve you. If you can do this during or soon after joining us for live stream worship, it greatly helps us in our effort to effectively communicate, connect, and care for the Holy Savior family. Again, thanks. Stay safe and God bless. What a great joy it is to worship with you today for those who are in person, for those joining us live stream, those who will be driving through later this afternoon for our drive through communion. It is great joy as we gather here and we celebrate this God who gives us life, gives us every breath that we have, and especially gives us life in His, save, his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. So as we go out this day, go out knowing that you have a God who loves you and a God who goes with you. A reminder again, 12, 3 p.m. if you'd like to join us for our drive through communion. God's richest blessings. Have a great day.